My name's Rebecca. Currently, I'm the regional advisor for violence against women, domestic abuse, and sexual violence. And I work across Gwent with responsibility for the development of a strategic plan on behalf of key partners, local authorities, health, police, probation, and others to develop a plan for how they're going to tackle and make a difference for um, preventing and protecting and supporting um, those affected by all forms of violence against women, domestic abuse and sexual violence. It's a job that I've been doing for three and a half years. It's been a, a huge privilege, very difficult in many respects. It's an area of work that I'm very passionate about and as a practitioner it's where I started. I first started working in the sector in 1997 for a local women's aid group and I began by working as a child welfare coordinator based within one of the two refuges that we had in the area. The, the moment I started was the moment that I knew that I was in the right place. We were a, an organisation that were still working as a collective. That was quite a, a new way of working, one that in many ways I, I embraced and I understood I had a lot of respect for the people that I worked with. Many of them had been very much part of an earlier movement, which um, I felt I'd come in at the tail end. I think you always feel like you're coming in at the tail end, and you never are. You're part of it, of course you are, and I'd say that to a younger, a younger woman now. The development of the children's group was really important to me. We, very much the LSPCC, were like that kind of flagship, if you like. So they'd come in and they'd show you the way. I think we were one of the first groups to run the Freedom Programme. And that was in uh, 1998 or 1999. So really quite early days to deliver that. And the way that the children's group came was, well, if, if there's a women's group running, that can be that freedom programme, we'll do the children's group element. That's how it, it started. But with the NSPCC, they're very much like that flagship organisation where they come in and they kind of develop projects and then move on. And I can remember that feeling of, we're going to be doing this alone. <laughs> And we did. There was a point in time where myself and my colleague were that group and developing that group. It felt like the most precious thing in the whole world. I think that we got it right in lots of ways. So the challenges were, it was very reactive. A lot of the understanding and the processes in other organisations wasn't necessarily there. So I think you had that challenge of constantly raising awareness within your own role. Now, that's still really important now, but it looks a bit different. You know, I do think there were elements of people didn't really talk about it, didn't really want to talk about it. But, you know, if I, if I think about, for example, some of the schools we worked with, if you're in a specific location and you build those links, so we actually had, we had really good relationships with the schools. If you could have just taken those schools everywhere, family you needed, that's what you'd have done. A post came up within resettlement and I got that. But that's where I had my eyes opened really to don't know where a family's going to be placed. And it was almost that concern of they could go anywhere and they've already, you know, they've had that kind of safety net of refuge and then suddenly they're placed out in a brand new community with a lot an awful lot of unknowns you know different for every family of course but for example wanting to remain private both for their own well-being as well as safety reasons and yet having to disclose again just to get the right sort of support and help at the time as well there was the only way that a family could register with a doctor was, and um, while, while they were in refuge, was if they registered as a temporary or emergency patient. You, you look back and you think, how, how could that be when you're at your most, you know, the, some of the most vulnerable situations or the most vulnerable families, and yet they can't get the basic health care? I hear different issues that you do need to stay with your head in that space of, reality check this isn't right and question everything and I guess that's why it to, to be in the kind of world where you, you've got ability for helping things to happen on a bigger level you recognize the responsibility and how important it is
Thank <laughs> you.